I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm Bruce Taylor from Sweden, Maine. I, uh, although I'm a member of many organizations, my, testi I'm, my testimony uh, is not for any specific organization. Chairman Parker, Commissioner Mercer, and members of the board, good morning. I appreciate the opportunity to speak about the rules concerning metallic mining. First, I must voice my concern about the lack of time you have allowed for con consideration of this vital matter by the citizens. Perhaps it's just me with my busy schedule since you published the notice. It's been very hard to, as you'll find out, unfortunately, through my uh, comments, it's been hard to get things together. After months of deliberation on part of the DEP, apparently dating back from at least December 11th of last year, the public has only had a, less than a month to consider and formulate response to these rules. Not only does such a hurried time frame stifle public participation, but it decreases transparency and trust in your actions and raises questions of just administration and relief. As I believe Mr. Crawford asked, why are we here? I'll tell you why I'm here, because I'm a physician. I'm board certified in anesthesiology. I did a fellowship at Boston Children's Hospital in pediatric anesthesia and intensive care. I'm board certified in pediatrics, having done a fellowship in metabolism and genetics that had where metal metabolism was very important. I have had patients with lead intoxication, mercury intoxication, and one patient with uh, selenium intoxication. Also, I've treated patients with abnormalities in copper and zinc metabolism. When I was in the Army, although they were not, my pa although they were not directly my patients, I was on the team in uh, Suriname, which is old Dutch Guiana, that diagnosed arsenic, uh, saw patients with arsenic intoxication. I also teach at US, USM and UNE and many diseases and many uh, diseases associated uh, with, with, uh, uh, heavy, uh, with, with heavy metals. To get on with the rules, as uh, Commissioner Mercer testified before the Energy and Natural Resources Committee on September 7th, um, uh, the department would, will employ data and science in its endeavors. I would like to present uh, some data and science that seems to be admitted, omitted by uh, presentations from the Department of Environmental Protection this meeting and at your last meeting on uh, August 18th. I'm concerned that Maine is already burdened with environmental toxicity from metals, lead, mercury, and arsenic. Uranium has also been, besides arsenic, has been found in well water. For example, in the 214, uh, uh, in 214, the Journal of Environmental Health published a study from three rural school districts, a national journey, ma journal, Maine made in the limelight, in three rural school districts that showed re significant reductions in full-scale IQ scores of five to six points points when, when the children were exposed to well water containing arsenic as low as five milligrams per, per liter, which is, and some of that is below, that's below the EPA standard. Um, extraction and beneficiation of the ore will bring these toxins out of their bound geologic environment and into the human, okay. I didn't want to take your time. It, Extraction and beneficiation of the ore will bring these toxics out of their bound geologic environment and into the human environment in very mobile and reactive forms. Elsie Gould from the Economic Policy Institute estimated that the loss for each single IQ point in lifetime earnings decreased by $21,000 in today's dollars. This does not include loss in income and taxes to the state, or societal costs for medical care, such as cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and also uh, psychological care, special education. I, I believe Professor uh, Eastler mentioned uh, the term, uh, brought up the concept of time prior. It's not uh, brought up, you know, things that happened in the past, those were in time prior. Let's look at what's, let's look at data being published today. Of the seven major industrial cycles sectors in the United States EPA's annual toxic release inventory, uh, which is self-reporting, so you know nobody would ever underestimate. Uh, the metallic mining sector has continually, continuously generated almost half, in fact, in the last uh, recent published inventory is 47% of all the waste from all the entire industrial sectors. More concerning, nine, <clears throat> again, 
continuously, including the most recent published study, and they're usually with the studies from the government reports are a year or so behind, 99% of metallic mining waste is left as on-site disposal. That is left on the land forever. And this, again, has been going on for quite a period of time. More concerning, uh, and, lead is and, and lead is extremely toxic and devastating to the fetus and children. While released from other sectors of lead, the other insect sectors of lead has decreased by 30% from 2003 until 2014. Metallic mining continues to increase. In fact, in the last report, 91% of all the lead released by in the industrial sectors came from metallic mining. Acid production from, from mains unusually or from mains high sulfur content will mobilize large quantities of toxics to be dispersed by air and by water and into the soil. And I think that puts to rest the claims of is that a hint? I think that puts to rest the claims of technological advancement, and that won't happen again because it's happening now and it continues to happen. The data clearly demonstrates that despite industry's claims, metallic mining continues to leave increasingly greater amounts of highly toxic material in our environment. The proposed rules allow for sintering, roasting, briquetting, and catching, and calcining. By adding heat to the beneficiation process, all of these processes generate fine particulate matter, 2.5 and smaller, that will contain heavy metals. These are the most toxic type of particulate matter with effects even in very low concentrations. I, I, part of my training was in one community that had an active smelter, and I practiced for many years in another community that had a re relatively recently closed smelter, and I can tell you the toxic legacy from heavy metals continues. The effects of the proximity living near a mining site have been well demonstrated, such as with the Tar Creek Superfund site, where it's been well demonstrated the effects on children's intellectual development. Also, toxicity from mining has been re reported from Poland and Mexico, and also Australia, where many of the uh, major miners come from. The actual waste from metallic mining has, has been diluted and fed and given to rats. It had a detrimental effect on their neurotransmitters and brain development. As you know, Maine is a very wet state compared to Western and Midwestern states where there is currently hard rock mining taking, uh, taking place. So even the comparison, uh, and also is my understanding, such as with slides 26 and 27 that were presented back on the, eight, on the um, your meeting on the 18th, where they looked, I think, one was from the Stillwater mine, I think the other one might have been, I can't remember, the Yardeen mine, those are very those ores, I'm told, are very high in oxide and very low in sulfur. So don't, you know, don't compare apples uh, with oranges. Uh, also, uh, when looking at water, where, um, where mine waste can be dispersed, the risk of cancer in children has been associated by mother's location to a watershed. That was written, that was Thompson et al. in the Journal of Water and Health in 2010. Further, a study here in New England, our neighboring state, um, done on pregnant women in New Hampshire demonstrated that even low levels of arsenic in drinking water can produce negative fetal effects. Sorry. Okay, and that was by Caragas. Of all the common drinking water prop contaminants, arsenic produces 10 to 100 times the cancer rates compared to similar elements of other contaminants. Even in low concentration, it can have an impact on uh, cancer incidents, as Smith reported in the Journal of Science in 2002. It's, um, also, Maine has gotten into uh, 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 national studies. The U.S. Navy did a study on the sediments of Goose Pond at the Callahan Mine Corporation Superfund site in Brooksville. They found 100% mortality for their organisms when exposed to Goose Pond uh, 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 sediments. Um, a year ago, December, another study on the Callahan Superfund site found toxic elevations of copper and zinc from seepage, seepage from waste rock, piles, sediments, and debris. 
Uh, these metals were reported to continuously flux into the water column and became bioavailable and concentrated. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get the uh, uh, citation uh, 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 when I send the email. Like I say, um, I apologize for not having time to completely research this in the last few days, but as far as I can tell, the last use of beneficiation uh, with application of heat in the United States that I could find was about 15 years ago in northeast Nevada. And after Salt Lake complained of mercury contamination, uh, it, it, it stopped. Although much concern about the dangers of metallic mining have rightly been paid to water, it is imperative to note that fine particulate matter is not confined to a single watershed or aquifer as you may be able to delineate uh, water, but it can cross multiple bodies and formations for many hundreds if not thousands of miles, depending on, on, on the size. Researching sintering, which is allowed under the metallic mining rules, I could only find recent industrial uses in countries like South Africa or Mozambique. However, these very harmful processes are allowed under the proposed rules. If such beneficiation processes are being included because they are in the enabling statute, I would wonder if the board has the right to propose changes in the enabling statute to protect harm to human health. Also, it appears to me, not being a lawyer, that the board may have authority under section of 584, establishment of ambient air quality standards, to prevent these air toxics from being released. Um, the rules are also not protective of human health because there is no proscription of smelting. I could only find, again, in the last 36 hours, and not knowing what I'm doing, I could only find one siting of smelting in the state statutes. This was for the Saco River Corridor Corporation where smelting was specifically prohibited. I feel that it should be unambiguous, smelting should be unambiguously prohibited under the, the proposed Chapter 200 rules. In the proposed rules, I counted approximately 47 times public health was mentioned. But, spe but the specifics to protect the public, especially vulnerable populations such as the developing fetus, child, and elderly, protecting adverse effects are lacking. There should be a human health assessment performed early in the permitting process to determine baseline health conditions for those who would be adversely affected if there was decrement, decrement in air, water, or soil quality. This should include those in proximity in, uh, of the area of mining operations and those who would also be affected by migration of toxics in air, water, and soil. The recent mining disasters in Mount Pali, British Columbia, R Brazil's Rio Dulce, and also just very recently, Colorado's, Colorado's Gold King Mine and Aminus River are examples of acute incidents that have a profound and lasting effect on human health. But also the risks of vulnerable populations, not from acute incidents, but from lower long-term dose of exposure must be considered. I believe Mr. Um, uh, Crawford brought up, brought up subchapter four on financial assurance and insurance. Um, uh, again, not knowing what I'm reading in the statute, it appears to me that it really does not cover, it covers remediation of the soil, land, and air, but it does not cover remediation of humans. And I think this is the Department of Environmental Protection and the Board of Environmental Protection. Finally, there should be a general liability insurance policy for demanded from the mining operation that does not specifically exclude pollution liability coverage. Liability from pollution events must be covered by commercial insurance. This can be in conjunction with any bonding mechanism, but again, from what I understood from chapter four is really for remediation of the event, the soil, and not remedi acute remediation of any human. Since industry claims that now due to their great technological advances, mining operations are so risk-free from any catastrophic event, it would be very easy and inexpensive for them to get comprehensive pollution coverage. Well, 
I, I think it's telling that the probability of obtaining commercial pollution coverage is essentially non-existent. Although maybe the wild environmentalists and a few crazy doctors think that there is a danger, the underwriters and actuarials and risk managers in London, New York City, or Hartford will never issue such a policy. Why? Because they've learned from the Superfund sites, a majority of which, as you can look on the national priorities list, a majority are metallic mining sites including not Harborside, as we euphemistically brought to you on the, uh, in August, I think it's Callahan Mine Corporation, which is costing us tax dollars. Um, but when you look, they've, they've learned from Superfund sites, a majority of which are metallic mining from a, an acute disaster such as like Mount Polly, the tremendous financial costs that due to the extensive and prolonged metallic mining damage from mines. I, um, I, would, I realize that this is a Chapter 200 hearing uh, and, and that we're discussing what's presented in a failing, and the conundrum is that you were discussing what is being presented in a, in a f very flawed statute. I, would, it, I think it's very presumptuous of me, but I hope that you have the power to recommend uh, a, a new, new statutes. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. Oh, and I admitted that I'm testifying against the rules. Thank you for your time.